Now, when it comes to working with block plugins, there's only a couple that I actually want to use. And one of those is Cadence Blocks. I've been using it for quite a while. Now, I only use the free version, and today we're going to take a look at what's been included in 3.1, the latest update to Cadence Blocks free. So the biggest update is the new advanced forms. This opens up a lot of options. And if you don't want to use the third party plugin to add in a form when you're working with Cadence Blocks, you don't need to anymore. Well, for most cases anyway. So let's go ahead and add one in and take a look at some of the options. I'm going to keep it really simple, just drop in a basic two column layout. And inside the first one, we're going to go ahead and search for form. Now you'll see we've got the original form element. So if you were using forms from the previous versions of Cadence Blocks, you can carry on using those. But if you want to take advantage of the advanced version, we'll select that block now. Now once you do that, you can see it allows us to select a form or we can create a new one. So for this example, let's create a new form. This will then present us with a couple of starter point options of which you can start from any of these if you want to. Let's say we want to create something like a contact form with some options. We can select it. We can then go ahead and choose the kind of style. Now, everything we pick here can be overridden and changed and updated to whatever you want. So let's say we want to use one of the options for the basic form. We'll select it. It'll ask us what you want to title this. So we'll just say contact form. And if we want to drop in a description, you can do, but it's totally optional. Once we're happy, we'll click on create, and that will then go ahead and create the form with the basic placeholder elements in place. If we take a look at the list view on the left hand side, you can see there's our form inside our section. You can see it's an advanced form because it has ADV inside the brackets. And if we open this up, it'll show us all the different components that make up that actual form. Again, we can expand any of these out and see exactly what's inside there. Now, one of the other things I want to quickly show you while we're here is one of the new features being added into 3.1. And that gives us the ability to name any of our different sections and row layouts and so on to make things just a little bit more obvious. Now, this is something that's been in generate blocks for a little while. And now it's been introduced in Cadence blocks, but it's a little bit different inside Cadence on how we access it. We'll select the element we want, in this case, the form. We'll click on the little kebab menu on the right hand side and inside there we have the option for rename. Now this is available on pretty much all of these different blocks. We can click on rename and we can give this a name. We'll call this contact form and we'll click save and you can see that's now updated. If you want to rename the layout, we can do the same thing again. We can click the little hamburger menu, click on rename and we'll call this contact block and click save. So you can do this any way you want to, to make the whole layout on the left hand side underneath the list view considerably more obvious what you're working with. Great if you're working as a team or you're handing this off or you come back in six months time and try to wonder exactly which bit you need to click on. You can now rename all these different elements, blocks, sections, everything very easily. Now going back to our form, we'll select it. You can see we can select any of the elements inside here. If you want to add anything new in, we can click on the little plus to add a new field. And inside there, we have all the different field types we can insert into our new advanced form. So you've got your standard fields like your text, your email, and so on, the kind of things we've already got inside here. If we jump over to the new advanced fields, this gives us some more options. We can do things like upload files. We can insert times, dates. We can even add in hidden fields and acceptance fields. So if you want to make sure that someone accepts your terms and conditions when they submit a form, great for things like GDPR, you can simply go ahead, click the accept, and that will drop in a new field. Now you'll notice we've got a field label and we have a little checkbox. So we can drop in. For example, I agree to your terms and conditions. If you want to, you can select any of this and you can go ahead and you can link that out to your page. So you can link off to your terms and conditions page. So it's very easy. And you've got the opt-in message underneath, which you can again type in. And there we go. We've now added in a opt-in message. And if we take a look on the right hand side, you can see all the options we can edit directly inside the form itself are available on the right hand side. We can set this to be a required field to make sure that they check it. If they don't check it, they can't complete the form. You kind of get the picture. And then you want, you want to, you can show the label or hide the label. It's entirely up to you. You can drop in or edit your acceptance statement. You can add a description in. You can start this checked, which is not recommended when it comes to things like GDPR. It's an opt in, not an opt out. And if you want to, you can add in default values and you can also access data from your database. So you can pre fill this out with data. Pretty cool. Under advanced, you've got options then for the field width and so on. You can 
open up the extra settings if you want to name the field you want to input the area description so again great to see that we have more options when it comes to accessibility and this is something that has been added into the form itself there is more accessibility options which is always a good thing to see next up we have the populate with parameter option now this is super powerful especially if you're a marketer and you're using online advertising or email marketing you can send over any kind of parameter you want via urls so for example you may want to use your utm parameters to say what kind of campaign it is and so on you can drop that information inside there and it will look at the url that you see at the top and it'll grab whatever information that follows that utm parameter or whatever that parameter you want maybe someone's name or so on you can use those options inside the populate with parameter option again another good thing to see inside you let's go back and select our contact form itself so now you can see if we look at the options on the right hand side we can choose the form and you can see we've got a range of different forms i've created one previously so all the forms you have are available inside you and you can edit these externally and i'll show you that in a moment you can again add descriptions but you can also come in and say what happens when someone submits the form you can see email is the default option, but there are more options available in the free version and the pro version will obviously add, add even more options in. So things like convert kit, database entry and so on. But even the free version still gives you enough to get up and running so you can redirect this afterwards and you can stack these. So if you were used to working with the email options inside something like Elementor, where you can have multiple actions once someone submits the form, you can do the same thing here. So you can have the email, you could then redirect and you could even then just push the content over to MailerLite if it's a subscription form or so on pretty cool to see all those options and underneath we have the hide form after submit so once the form is submitted instead of just having the success message and the form then just being emptied and still displayed this will allow you to choose the option to hide it once the form's been submitted pretty cool to have an option like that now when you select any of these submit actions you'll see it'll open up more options underneath so at the moment the email settings we could open that up fill out the email to address the subject and so on and you can send this as html or plain text whatever you prefer and if you add another one in for example let's just say we want to redirect you'll see now we have the option for redirect settings and we can say where we want to redirect to afterwards again very similar to what you have inside a tool like elementor Come over to the style options you can see we've got all the options for our global variable based styling options so we can set the row gaps using the predefined options or we can go ahead and we can override these and manually insert default values our own values whatever you want and then you've got your options then for your normal and your focus state so you can easily change the input color again using any of the global colors you have set up so you can choose any colors your placeholder color your background type gradients input background and so on shadows and you can also set up the focus so for example you may set a focus color and then when someone focuses on one of these fields you can see the color changes you've got all the options you want to create great looking forms and again we've got various different options then to pull in database values as well so it's very easy to start working with let's update this and save it and then what we're going to do is we're going to hop out of here and underneath cadence blocks you'll see we have an option that says all forms so our forms are available inside here as well you can see there's the contact form we've just created and any other forms previously created are stored here as well if we click and open this up this will take us in and now we remove the distractions from the entire page design and just have the form itself and again we've got all those options so I'll open up our list view you can see we can expand all this out there's our advanced form all the options on the right hand side are available to us so you can easily come through update everything without the distraction of the entire design hit update and then that will be reflected back in the page itself so it's really useful to see you can have all these set up and you can reference them so you don't have to keep creating forms over and over again you can access them directly inside here now on top of some of the advanced form options you still have even more if we click the plus hop over this time to layout you can see we can drop in advanced headings and sections and so on so you can create as complex or as comprehensive a form as you want and we hop over to miscellaneous you can see we have the option for recapture we can add that inside there and we can choose between v2 and v3 of google capture and also turnstile and h capture obviously you need to put in the relevant keys and so on to access those but it's directly integrated into your form element so again always good to see that we have those kinds of options included so the new advanced forms option inside cadence blocks 3.1 brings a lot of options in if you want to use just one place to work with all of your forms now obviously it's going to miss out on some of the more way advanced form options that you have in some of the more feature rich forms dedicated form plugins but for most use cases 
This includes what I would consider to be more than enough to do most things. Obviously, if you want more, you're going to need to look elsewhere. Now, while the new advanced forms is probably the biggest update and addition to 3.1, there are also lots of other little tweaks, updates, and feature enhancements. So let's take a quick look at those next. Now, the first one we've got is the ability to use video backgrounds from Vimeo and also from YouTube. So let's take, for example, this hero section at the top. Let's go ahead and rename this like we've seen before, just to make sure we understand what this is. So now we've got the hero section selected. If we come over to the right hand side, open up the styles panel, you'll see under the background type, we have the new option now for video. If we click and open this up, we can choose where the video comes from, local MP4, and we can then select the video. So if you want to store this locally, you can do that. You can also open up YouTube or Vimeo. If we choose YouTube, what you need to do is simply put in the ID for that video. You can see I've got the ID inserted here. And to access that, all you need to do is hop over to the video you want from YouTube, take a look at the URL at the top, and you can see we've got the full YouTube URL, and we've got V equals, and then you've got this little string of ca characters and numbers and letters. All you need to do is grab that from there and then simply drop that into the option for the YouTube ID. Choose what kind of video ratio you want, whether you want 16 by 9, 4 by 3, and so on. And then you can choose to mute and or loop the video, set background colors, put posters in there. So if you want to have an image appear while the video loads, which is good for slower connections, you can drop that inside there. You can create overlays and so on. So we can say we may want to put a dark overlay over this. And we can go ahead and we can adjust the parameters for that. So at the moment, you can see we can adjust things using the slider, all pretty simple and straightforward, your blend mode and so on, all the options you expect to have inside you. Then when you update that, and we'll save it. Now you can see there's our video playing in our background on our preview for the page. Very simple to do. And you can do exactly the same with the Vimeo videos as well. Now, what we see in the advanced forms block, we also have one more block element that's been introduced in 3.1, and that's the progress bar. Let's go ahead, insert that, and there's our basic progress bar. Now, if we take a look on the right-hand side, again, where all our options are, we've got three different types of progress bar to choose from. We've got the line, we've got the circles, and we've also got the sort of half circle progress bars. You can choose whichever of these you want, and then you can customize pretty much all the aspects of it. So we can adjust the thickness of the bar, you can adjust the number format, you can adjust the progress slider itself. So let's say it's only like 57.3%. You can see that updates your maximum progress. So you may have more than 100. And you've also got the ability to show or hide the number and adjust things like the prefixes, the number suffix, percentages, and so on. And you can tweak the animation as well. So you can make it longer or shorter. You can see, very easy to do. It's all pretty intuitive. And you can also control the easing option, whether you want to use ease in, out, ease in, and out, or linear, and so on. So you can customize this to the way you want. And then under the styles, obviously, you can control the styling of this, the alignment of the text, what you want to show, and what you want to hide, and so on. So all the options are here for you. It's very simple to use. You can see we can change the background colors of this, and we can say we want to have these, the options. It's simple. But it's nice to have another one of these in because, well, there are times where you want to show the progress of something, and now you have it integrated directly into Cadence Block 3.1 and above. Now, many of the other little tweaks that we see inside Cadence Block 3.1 and above are more quality of life than anything that are kind of groundbreaking. And one of those is the ability that when you switch between the different preview modes, you'll see what settings have been set for the padding and the margins. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, if we take a look at this hero section and we go to advanced, you'll see that we've got padding at the top of large and we've got padding at the bottom of large. And then we've got nothing set for the top and bottom when it comes to margins. Now, when we switch over to tablet view, you'll see that they still stay inside there, but they ghosted out to tell us what's been set up in the previous sort of layout size. And the same thing goes when we switch to mobile view. You can see this has a different one for the top. This has got medium set up, but you can see large is still set for the bottom, which is inherited from the normal desktop layout. So you can see this is a nice visual way of seeing if you've changed something, and if you haven't, what it's actually inheriting from the previous state or states you've got set up for the different sizes. Again, like I say, a nice little quality of life that just makes visual things a little bit easier to see when you're working with things. Now, if you've ever wanted to control the spacing in between your sections and you've kind of had to do it in a little bit of a convoluted way, that's going to be made considerably easier. Let's grab a section, we'll select it, Take a look on the right hand side and we now have row gap and we can easily adjust the row gap directly inside here. And we've also got the option to choose between pixels, M's and REMs. There's a range of different options we can choose from to control that spacing. 
nice to see we've got another option to make life a little bit easier. Now, if you're the kind of designer that enjoys working with gradients, but you've been a little bit frustrated with the ability to be very precise inside cadence blocks, this new option may be very useful for you. Let's go and select our hero section. We'll change the background type over to gradient, and let's open up our gradient options by selecting it. You'll see we've got this new option now for control point position percentage, which is not as easy to say as you may think. What this allows you to do is simply go ahead and drop in exactly what value you want. So for example, we may say 10, and you can see now we control exactly where that gradient effect takes effect in the overall design. If we change it to something like 50, you see it updates accordingly. So now we have a more granular level of control as opposed to just simple slider to move things around inside our design. Again, more of a quality of life for some users than being something that's groundbreaking that's going to make a massive change to your workflow. But that basically wraps up what 3.1 brings to the table. The new advanced forms, I think, is very welcome, and some of these quality of life changes, especially the ability to name the various different sections, blocks, widgets, all those kinds of things, really does make life a little bit easier. But I pass the question over to you. What are your thoughts? Are you a Cadence Blocks user? And are these going to be useful updates and changes for you? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, all applicable links in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.